Hi guys, today I will demonstrate how we can solve this question asked by one of our members in the group. He is looking to know how we can make Universal Copy, the app here, plus. He cannot activate this button on this corner and he was asking how we can make it pro. So we are going to help him make the app a pro. First of all, I'm going to install the app. While the app is installing, I want just to demonstrate that this is a, actually a very expensive app. It could cost around $18, which is a lot. But this video is just for educational purpose only. So I want to mention that this app actually uses a service. So we need to activate the service. But I was recording this uh, video at least like four times and didn't know that it doesn't record once the app is working because it will interfere with my uh, screen recorder. So I will try to do it, but I cannot demonstrate everything because my recording will stop working at all. But I will do my best. First of all, we need to activate the, the app. So let's go activate it. Now the app is activated. If I click on this button, I will see this message here. And if I try to actually click on this one, what was the request to have the OCR mode? And the OCR mode is allowed you to uh, copy text from a picture because it can analyze any text and convert it to a real text in a, in a uh, file. So if I open here, I see that the button is still not activated. Like a button activated look red like this one. And exactly the same message appear here. So let's see how we can deal with this uh, problem. So first of all, because there's two messages, this one, if I click on this place or if I click on that place, it happened exactly the same. We know that there is probably in the code a function to generate this message. And this message is almost unique. If I go to other options, like make it uh, full screen mode or uh, disable animation or uh, run the app in the background, all of these, I'm not going to run it in the background, but all of these doesn't, uh, doesn't need really a plus mode. The only place need a plus mode is the OCR mode. But the two places request this OCR mode, when I click on it, I will see exactly the same message we see here. So this is interesting to know because we need to investigate before we start cracking an app, how it behaves and where we are going to look. And here, I'm going to try to find where this message in the code is and try to bypass this message. Ask the software or the app to not appear this message and to ignore it. So I need to find where it, where it is in the code. For this, I need to find like some specific test text I can uh, like type. I found that below to subscribe here, this syntax or click below to subscribe, subscribe is a unique text. I cannot find anything inside the main page has below to subscribe. If we look like here, there is no place where say below to subscribe, except in this box message here. So let's go to empty manager. I'm going to delete what I did before because I record this video and it failed to record. So let's say universal copy, extract the app, located. Now we are going to open the app. We go directly to resources and we try to find the string, which is below to subscribe. Good. Actually we find all the core of the message. So if you remember in this box here, there is different section. The first one, we have the title. The second one, we have the, the code. And we have here, cancel, monthly, and yearly. Actually, in reality, each part of this box has a different ID. And actually, the box itself has a different ID. So now we find the ID of the content inside of the text here. But because all those happen together, in the code, they should be all together in one model or one method where that it appeared this box. So let's go and investigate now. So now I find this I, this box. This box name is OCR upgrade message. But inside the text file, it will not happen that you can find OCR upgrade message. You will find the ID number of this message. So the ID number of this message, we copy it. We can verify this ID if it's correct. 
and we can see that this message happened in English. So we can see it in English. This feature is included in Universal Copy Plus. Click below to subscribe, as we saw in our app. Now, if someone use, like let's say, Spanish or French or Polonese or, or uh, Portuguese, let's take like French one. If one has a French phone and he set the language to French, he's going to see this message. And instead of seeing the English part, he's going to see like set function is disponible dans l'abonnement universel, copy plus, cliquez ici pour vous abonner. So it's a completely different message, but they have all in common, they have the same ID. So whatever language you are using, it's exactly the same method because the message for different language has one ID. So inside the text file, you don't need to uh, block the message for French phone, different than Spanish, different than Portuguese or English. It's just one ID. So now we copy this ID. Let's go to the DEX file and try to find where we see this ID. Sorry for that. Let's search for the ID. Okay. So this ID message happened once in the file. So we are lucky. So this is, it looks like it's an easy um, modding. So let's click on it. Okay. It's happened here. So it's this one here. But investigating this block here quickly, we notice that we have different code was loaded first or different ID was loaded, as you can see here. And then at the end, we see a, a like a show show dialog box. So I suspect that this is exactly this block key. So I went, I'm not going to show you here, but I investigate each block what this means. Like this one here, I found it is referencing the XML file. This one here is the title. This one here is the body. And the other part are for the button, like cancel, uh, cancel monthly and yearly. And if all your target is to not let this box showing on the screen, you can just easily go here and disable the show box. So let's say this is a message for updating the app and it bother you every time say update the app, but you don't want to update the app. You want just this message to not appear. You can disable here. But in this case, if we disable it, then we go here. Also, if I click, I will not see this box, but it's not going to activate this button. So we need to go see who called this function and try to investigate a little bit deeper in the code. So we don't need here to disable it because this is not our target is to disable it. Our target is to activate the message. So this method here, P, V, will create the dialog box we saw. So who called this P? Who asked this P to appear? So there is somewhere in the code, this P, there was a function, let's say, if you are plus, don't show P. If you are not plus, show P. So let's go figure out who show this p method. So I'm going to copy this p method and going back, exit without saving, and try to figure out in the code where the p message is happening. Oh my god, here we have a lot of places. Actually, we have more. Okay, but this is a little bit headache. Let's make it easy for us. I'm going to make all this small and show you where I, I will go first and why I will go to these places and not the other places. Because the purpose of this video is to teach everybody how we think more than how we do it. So this one and this one, their names are a little bit strange, this one also. So we cannot disable this uh, block. We will keep it at the end if we need to go back to it. But here, Android X and this one and this one and this one and this one, those are related to Android and not related to this particular app. The same thing happen on all these blocks. So the remaining block are this three are related to the app. And those are three. I will start actually investigating here. If I fail to find anything, then I will go inside those two and maybe the right function will be called inside those blocks. So for now, let's go and check those. I'm going to start with the first one. If you are lucky, we can find the solution just with the first one and we don't need to go for the others. So here in the first one, we find that the, this box appeared four times. We don't know where we start, but usually it's just like an investigation. So I will go for the first one and see what the code, 
give me if, if it has any meaning or not. So we're going to first one. The title is already very interesting. It said that this box appear in the preference page. And we know all that <laughs> this is the preference page. So probably we are here. We are in the right spot. But let's check. So something else we notice that the P happen at the end of the code. And before this happen, there is some test happening. Like there is test here, there is test here. So here it's promising because we, we know that for this uh, bad boy or bad dialogue happen, ask us to pay, those conditions will decide if this will happen or not. So let's investigate further. This P is the last function, so it's here. I'm going to put a mark on line 82. But we know that on line 69 said we have a condition. If its condition is true, go to condition 27. Condition 27 actually passed this function P, passed the line 82. It's here. So it's mean if this was true, do not show the message. The same for this one. If this condition also is true, skip, don't show this message. Those are interesting. So we can simply go and say, you know what? I don't want to make any condition here. Let's edit function here and say directly go to condition 27 and don't appear anything here. And probably it's going to work. But this is going to work only inside this page. But probably somewhere else in the software, this message will also pop up. We don't want that. We don't want just to solve on each page, make it pro. We need to find the, the ultimate place where the beginning of the test happened to know if we are pro or not for this message to happen. So let's go dip deeper inside the code and try to understand what's happening here. We notice that the first one here, first test, doesn't say go to line 27 and return and skip, but it said instead a check is v0 equal to 0. If it's equal to 0, go to condition 10, which is here and do those stuff. If it was equal to 1, return v1 and v1 equal 1. Okay, this is interesting, but where is v0? So this is mean in, in English. Check if v0 equals 0, then continue. If v0 equal 1, for sure don't show the message because just return true, return v1 and skip everything below. But if 0 equals 0, go here and do this two test. Okay? Now we want V0 to be 1 because if V0 is 1, we already skip everything and we make it work. We don't need to do this two test and check what's happened and whatever. And if you look on this one here, this one is a switch preference and it's checked. So this is <laughs> actually check if this one is on or off. <laughs> so we don't want this. We want to say we are pro already. So let's see who set the V0. The V0 is set in this function here in the function below. And the value is coming from here. Because this function finished by z, z mean boolean, so it's inside this function's call function, we are going to have 0 or 1 on the output. And this 0 or 1 is going to be transferred to this value. And uh, if this value is 0, we need to do extra test. If this value is 1, go out and don't show this message. Logic is, why we don't go inside this and see how we can make it all the time 1? We go inside this function and we notice that whatever is going to happen inside this function, the decision if the output will be 0 or 1 also is decided in another test function. This function here, O, is also boolean and if it was a true or 1, is going to set this one to 1 and if it was false or 0, is going to, to make all the CZ 0. So that means we need to go deeper in the code and see who set this to 1 or 0. Okay, so this also has, it's funny, this is also has another function where it tests if it is 0 or 1, and we set this value where it set this 0 or 1. So I check, okay, why not go inside this? Mm -hmm. Here we said we arrived to the private field. So it's mean like here we cannot change this one. So the only way we can make this function 1, we cannot go any more deeper in the code, is just to force it, sorry for that, that just to force the code to return all the time true or one like that because if we go deeper inside the call we found that this one we cannot go deeper 
this one is set here. And when we set this to true, the output to true, the function OZ will be true. So let's save it. And if the function OZ will be true, then we know if this one is a true, it's going to give V0 true. So it means CZ also is true. And if CZ is true, we know that the return here will be 1. And the condition V10 will not be will not happen. And just we are going to return what is in the value V1, which is 1. So let's compile it and see if it's work. If it doesn't work, then we need to check what's happening in the other. If it works, then we are done. Go back. Let's install it and test it. Install. OK, let's activate the service. The moment of the truth. OK, something really good happened. I don't have any more of this bad message here. You remember, we have a bad message here. We don't have it. So now the moment of the truth. Can I activate this button here? Yes, I can. Now activate the button. Let's see if it's activate the options inside. So let's go and test it let's say in the group uh, to test it you need to click on it so usually i don't know if you can see this in the in the video but usually when i activate uh, this to happen on the top of the screen it disable my video recording so maybe you can just hear my voice but trust me it works so if i click on the normal or i click on the ocr plus both of them are happening. So here is a universal copy will start capturing everything that display on your screen. And because of that is going to disable my video recording. But I tested and it's work really well. Now I will let you test it on your uh, phones. But trust me on words. Now it's open and it's uh, it became a pro. Thank you very much.